So I'm here today to talk to you about the importance of listening to your gut. Good day, everyone, and welcome. Hope by end of this session, you have something interesting to share, and I am equally excited to impart mine. I am Sharamni Tiagaraja, lecturer from School of Healthy Aging, Medical Aesthetic, Regenerative Medicine, UCSI University, and in this field of microbiology for more than 15 years and currently embarking into regenerative medicine in last eight years. We know and even heard the life on earth starts with microorganism and things evolve into much complex and with civilization and high technology, human has raised as most powerful species. Well, it's not just that now, we should start looking at what else lies beneath and beyond of these human mind expansion. The role of gut microbiome in these human health and mental health does matter for the human evolution. Have you ever, yes, have you ever felt like gut wrenching or feeling sick in stomach while your friends who had the same meal might not or had lesser? Another scenario, have you had any anxiety attack like giving presentation or having performance review with your boss to get butterflies in the stomach? Some could even go frequently to washroom. Well, we do feel it at one point in our lifetime. Am I right? The forgotten organism or the forgotten virtual organ. Looking at the slide, it shows that in most of our education syllabus, this is not thought as main topic, but a subtopic in digestion system. Along the way, we forgot their presence in us. In reality, gut microbiome does play a very important role in mental and physical health. And to wrap it up, we are Petri dish on food. Heard of microbial fingerprint? Do you know one third of a gut microbiome is common to most people, while two thirds are specific to each other, giving us individuals' identity as microbial fingerprint. Get to know some of the fascinating facts of gut microbiota. In a standard reference, man weighing 70 kilogram it seems that gut microbiota weighs about 200 gram, which is as equivalent to a medium-sized mango. Digestive tract from mouth to rectum is nearly 7 to 10 meters in length, but the surface area is 30 to 40 square meter. That is about the size of studio apartment. In early 2000, popular media and scientific literature reported that ratio between number of bacteria cells with human cells was 10 to 1. However, in year 2016, a study by Sander showed a different result with ratio of 1 to 1 only. In recent study, nearly 10 to 100 trillion microorganisms exist in human gastrointestinal tract, consisting of bacteria, virus, fungi, and even parasites. Almost 90 to 95 percent of the bacteria lies in your large intestine, which is most densely populated microbial ecosystem that even Amazon forest is incomparable in diversity. In early 2000, the Human Genome Project successfully mapped 23,000 genes in human, whereas in 2016, over 3 million gut microbiome genes were mapped. Although the composition of gut microbiota is personal as a fingerprint, it provides essential function for digestion and protection against infection. Metabolic niches in the gut microbiome. The localization and spatial organization of the gut microbiome are not uniform along the gastrointestinal tract. Dynamic gut ecosystem consists of many unique features such as pH, oxygen level, different strains of microbiome tissue interaction, 
can be observed. Factors that influence the gut microbiome. We were all sterile until we were delivered together with normal flora. Two types of factor plays the role in introducing the normal flora. That are factor over which we can take action and factor over which we cannot take action. Let's see now factor over which we can take action. Feeding methods for infant. Breast milk always seems to be the best not only in nutrition but also by introducing normal flora during the feeding process which is less likely to occur during formula milk feeding. Lifestyle. Trust me, healthy lifestyle like having regular exercise, gardening, yoga, meditation, getting good sleeping pattern make our gut much happier. Research has shown that individuals having sedentary lifestyle, obese, smoking, consuming alcohol, always in stress mode and being burnt out seem to have less diverse gut microbiome. In fact, all these unhealthy lifestyle increase in the abundance of pathogenic microbes in addition to constipation and bloating. The most crucial factor, diet. Healthy and balanced food, especially prebiotic that rich in fibers together with probiotic food promote healthy gut flora. Compared to Western diet that is high in fat, meat and refined sugar and salt. The way food is prepared also important. Like the saying goes, you are what you eat. Don't we have heard this before from our parents? Pharmaceutical medicine such as painkillers, antibiotic, steroid and laxative. Though essential for certain medical treatment, it could definitely deplete the quantity and diversity of gut microbiome. Geographical strategy or country which we reside, variation in human microbiome observed across country. Rural farming population has more gut microbiome diversity than urban population. Factors over which human cannot take action are genetics. Studies showed variants in the gut microbiome for different ethnicity or population throughout the world. Gestational age, another factor. Having childbirth through normal delivery introduce abundance of virginal microflora that predominant by lactobacillus, whereas cesarean delivery babies were colonized by mixture of potential pathogenic microbes. Aging. The diversity and quality of gut microbiome has been correlated with aging progression. All these factors, as mentioned, plays vital role in diversity, quantity and quality of gut microbiome in human lifetime. The gut microbiota function has many folds. The gut microbiota is the whole of commensal, symbiotic and pathogenic microorganism. The gut microbiota host interaction contribute to maturations of host immune system, modulating and teaching its systemic response by differentiating between friends and foes. Thus, it defends against harmful microorganisms and leaves no space for pathogen to colonize the gut. It also prevents leaky gut syndrome and able to degrade toxic compound. Tolerance towards food. Research study in animal model have reported that healthy gut microbiome not only resistant to food allergy but also experience reversal of established diseases. Certain food, like fiber, which human digestive system unable to digest, can be digested by gut microbiome. It also helps in weight control, blood sugar level, and produce short-chain fatty acid. Besides synthesized vitamin K, folate, amino acid, gut microbiome also facilitate absorption of mineral like magnesium, calcium, iron, thus promoting bone health. In gut-brain crosstalk, gut microbiome contribute to our behavior, satiety, mood, and pain. The gut microbiome composition changes significantly with aging process. In elderly population, the diversity of beneficial bacteria like lactobacillus, bifidobacteria decreases, 
while promoting unhealthy pro-inflammatory bacteria such as propionibacteria, fusobacteria, shigella, and clostridia, leading to dysbiosis. In addition, unhealthy modern lifestyle factor, which many have, exacerbate negative impact of aging. In healthy body, like us, pathogenic and symbiotic microbiota coexist without problems. Dysbiosis is the abnormal microbial colonization of the intestine, where changes in quantity and quality of normal flora become pathological and harmful. This can be observed in picky eaters who choose only certain type of food like high in fat or practice ketogenic diet, causing weak and low in gut microbiome diversity. Now you might ask, can we reverse that? Yes, of course. But it takes lots of energy, time and even might not be the same because the squid ratio has lost that particular strain to be revived. Researchers are beginning to study on how the gut microbiota influence biological function beyond the gut and play possible role in diseases. For example, there were differences in the fecal bacteria of patients with inflammatory bowel diseases compared with healthy people. More recently, I have read articles about the differences in the community of gut bacteria in individuals with mental health, psoriatic, arthritis, and autism. Over here, it shows this biosis phase of development. When intestinal flora equilibrium is disturbed, the optimum expected health effects are lost leading to colonization of aerobic bacteria, fungal and pathogen, which could cause into negative health impact, including autoimmune conditions. A common cause of dysbiosis is antibiotic therapy. Antibiotic is good, however, create a war zone, which act as nuclear bomb, not only to bad bacteria, but also for your gut microbiota and quickly change its composition. Development of pathobiome in critical illness can be observed in this slide. Two major phylogenic, namely firmicutes and bacteriodietes in gut microbiome, decrease along with other common cellular microbiota, making way for opportunistic pathogen and proteobacteria in compared to healthy individuals. This unhealthy condition increase the pro-inflammatory immune response and decrease in mucus layer, short-chain fatty acid production, and epithelial integrity and permeability, leading to leaky gut and low absorption of nutrient. Common symptom of unhealthy gut. Some don't even see it as gut related. Let me name a few. Constipation, diarrhea, bloating, food sensitivity, allergy, skin problem, foggy or erratic brain, Mood swings, chronic stress, depression, headache, feeling fatigue, autoimmune disease are found to be associated with dysbiosis. How does the brain and gut connect? To really understand it fully, it would need a thorough understanding in specialized fields of endocrinology, neurology, immunology, pathology, which is a bit beyond this talk and my understanding. However, these two systems are in constant bidirectional communication via the vagus nerve that runs from your brainstem down to abdomen and explain why you get butterflies in your stomach when you are nervous. Brain in the gut In a very real sense, we have two brains, one inside our skull and one in our gut. In fact, these two organs are created out of the same type of tissue in the developing embryo. No wonder. There is a saying, trust the gut feeling. Gut does act as second brain. It is because the enteric nervous system, which controls gastrointestinal system comprised of 200 to 600 million neurons as equivalent to number of neurons in the spinal cord and can operate autonomously. Even when vagus nerve is severed, enteric nervous system continues to function. This diagram in general showed the role played by the gut microbiome. 
Looking at the flow chart, we could see many vital functions played by gut, especially for the neurotransmitters. Gut microbiome enhanced neurotransmitter production, including dopamine, serotonin, noradrenaline, and aminobutyric acid, which is known as GABA. Serotonin, the neurotransmitter, 90 to 95% serotonin, known as feel good or happy hormone, is produced in the intestine. And over 40 million brain cells, most are influenced either directly or indirectly by serotonin. In the gut, it acts as hormonal messenger that regulate satiety, food carvings, digestion, nutrient absorption, peristalsis. While in brain, it acts as inhibitor neurotransmitter that regulates mental focus and clarity, learning ability, sleeping pattern, mood regulation, fear, anxiety, depression, psychosis, and much more. Now, imagine your favorite meal. Really see it in detail. Imagine the food in front of you right now. Look at the color, the texture, the aromatic smell that getting into you. This very thought of eating your favorite food can release the stomach juice before it gets there in real. This connection can go both ways and a troubled intestine can send signal to the brain. Therefore, person's gut or intestinal distress can be the cause or the product of stress, anxiety or depression. Not surprising that some people eat when they are in stress and not even feeling hungry, while all of us easily tend to get angry when hungry. Tryptophan is a very important source of food that our body needs. Gut microbiome play an important role for conversion of tryptophan into serotonin, which give us happiness and melatonin for good sleep. While tyrosine converted into dopamine, known as reward hormone, and norepinephrine, which help us to fight or fly. Imagine you are in a car throttling down the highway at the speed of 200 km per hour. That's the stress response and the vagus nerve is the brake. When you are stressed, you have your foot on the gas pedal to the floor. When you take it slow, deep breath, that is what engaging the brake. Hope you could take it easy now. All you need is just breathe. Come now, let's explore more of gut microbiome and mental health. Our next focus, how does this gut microbiome help or damage our mental health? Obviously, as mentioned earlier, it plays a key role in neurotransmitter production and cortisol hormone that influence the state of mind and stress level. Looking at this diagram, imbalance in dopamine would make us feel ambiguity, either hyper or passive, losing appetite as well, while in adrenaline imbalance, it makes us doubtful, feeling obsession or even having dementia, while in serotonin, the imbalance would cause us to lose our sleep, anxiety kicks in or even disability in learning. Many studies have been carried out on gut-brain axis and it is increasing, especially in mental health. Mainly, four types of mental condition is outlined, consisting of mental health, neurodegenerative disorders, neurodevelopment disorders, and insomnia. A review by Zhu et al. in 2020 stated that the dysregulation of gut microbiome due to the extrinsic and intrinsic factors contribute to brain disorders. Now, does this mean we should have zero level stress? No. When our brain perceives a threat, nervous system responds and releases 
stress hormones. These hormones help us to set up body for emergency action, including our heart rate increases, muscles get tighter, our blood pressure tend to rise, we tend to breathe even quicker, and senses get sharper. This is the stress performance curve. Stress activates the brain's response system, which impacts the body. The stress response is the body's way of protecting you. When working properly, it helps you to stay focused, energetic, and alert. In emergency situation, stress can save your life, giving you extra strength to defend yourself. The stress response also helps you to rise to meet challenges. Stress is what keeps you on your toes during a presentation, sharpens your concentration when you are attempting the game-winning free throw, or drives you to study for an exam when you did rather be watching TV. However, stress beyond optimal level stop being helpful and start causing major damage to our health, mood, productivity, relationship, and quality of life. Example, chronic stressor such as having heavy financial burden, chronic illness, loss of a job. Major life event, example, the death of loved ones, divorce. Daily hassles of having too many lists to do, overburdening, or being in demanding circumstances, getting insult and humiliation, to name a few. The major hormonal or endocrine response to the stress started in the brain, resulting in stress hormone cortisol secretion. Body's major system are also altered by stress, often with adverse effect. All these stress, depression and anxiety could easily cloud the brain, signaling pro-inflammatory immune response which leads to negative impact to physical and mental health, which impact which now? Gut microbiome impact the stress or stress impact the gut? Both ways. Over here in this diagram shows gut microbiome influences the stress reaction. In healthy gut, physiological level of inflammatory cell is low resulting in healthy central nervous system function. However, in abnormal or leaky gut, increase of pro-inflammatory cell causing dysbiosis which result in alteration in behavior, cognitions and emotion. Study in mice showed that changes in the gut microbiome changed their behavior. Rodents with sterile intestine were anxious, more sensitive to stressor, and exhibit less explorative activity. On the other hand, depression or stress impact the gut by altering our neuroendocrine, neurotransmitter, and endocrine dysfunction, while increase the pro-inflammatory cell, which lead to leaky gut and dysbiosis. Stress and gut microbiome. The bidirectional communication occurs between gut brain axis, comprised of central nervous system, include the signal pathways of vagus nerve, neuroendocrine, and neuroimmune roots, as well as tryptophan metabolism, would have impact due to stress. The host response to stress is coordinated by the brain with the central nervous system. Responding to the stressor, gut microbiome appear to be equally vulnerable and plastic in its response to homeostatic threats directed at either terminus of the gut-brain axis, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis programming, and responses show dependency on an intact gut microbiome. Preclinical studies indicate that stress exposure across the lifespan can impact on gut microbiome composition, including early life prenatal or postnatal and during adulthood stresses. Gut microbiome alterations are frequently reported in stress-related disorder such as depression, anxiety, and irritable bowel syndrome. Understanding the effects of stress microbiome interaction, their functional metabolic consequences, and the implication of drug action is surely now an important research objective. In general, when stress impacts your gut, 
nutrient absorption, oxygenation to your gut, metabolism, enzymatic output decreases. In addition, four times less blood flow to your digestive system. Alteration in gastrointestinal mortality and secretion also occur. Stress also causes negative effects on the gut regenerative capacity. Does our thought matter? Do we see it as a challenge or a threat? Do we feel we have the resources to handle it? Are our thoughts helpful or dysfunctional? If we are able to answer this, then we will know whether our thoughts matter. Oh my, now I think this is a major stress. Gastrointestinal reaction caused by stress impacts. Common symptoms due to stress are heartburn, indigestion, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, and abdominal pain. For example, in animals such as rats, stress can be induced in experimental situation by restraining them on a small platform surrounded by water. During this situation, alteration in mortality of the gut occur. The upper gut, including the stomach and small intestine, reduced movement. The large bowel increased output and transit speed. Humans respond to the stress in a similar manner. Stress promotes decreased gastric emptying and accelerated colonic transit in a normal volunteers. Volunteers in a study were being scooped for colonic. They were told that cancer was detected. This led to an abrupt increase in colonic contraction. This was resolved when the hoax was explained. This was found to be true in variety of stressor. Stress appeared to influence sensitivity to our body signal, such as pain. In gastroesophageal reflux, for example, stressor can increase heartburn symptom. And it wasn't the reflux itself that wasn't, but our awareness or sensitivity of feeling the reflux as heartburn. Mind-gut connection. Symptoms themselves can be stressful, and stress itself can make any symptom worse. Look at this lady. She divorced her husband as she could eat alone forever just to get proper digestion. Hmm. The question now, can the gut microbiota help to support in mental health disorder? Over here, you can see many terms that use to support healthy gut microbiome, such as prebiotic, probiotic, postbiotic, psychobiotic, and many more. Now, definitions of biotic. Probiotics, these are the live bacteria that upon ingest them help us digest food in our stomach. Prebiotic, these are the food for probiotics, mainly high in fiber. Symbiotic, it is a mixture of both probiotics and prebiotics. Postbiotics, this is either dead probiotic or the metabolic byproduct of probiotic. Example, vitamin B, vitamin K, amino acids, antimicrobial peptide, short chain fatty acid, enzyme, and hydrogen peroxide. Psychobiotic, this is similar with symbiotic. However, this prebiotic and probiotic that affects the gut brain axis, those products that can aid in mood regulation. Have you ever played Pac-Man? Interestingly, the concept of this game is similar to our gut health condition. Stress and depression on gut microbiota. This biosis of microbiota increased the composition of Fecalobacterium, Elistipus, Ruminococcus, Camelibacter jejuni, Firmicutes, while decreased the bacteriodytus. However, Consume healthy diet together with probiotic-based therapeutic, increased bifidobacterium and lactobacillus strain, resulting in improving physical and mental health of a person. If you wanted to have good gut microbiota, then you need to make shift of unhealthy diet to probiotic-rich food such as dairy products, fruit and vegetable, soya bean sauce, and drink more of kombucha beverages. Also, to support the probiotic, you need to have in addition of high-fiber products and legumes on your plates.
There is another alternative in introducing good bacteria, the new kids on the block, fecal microbiome transplant therapy. In this process, the good bacteria will be extracted from the stool of healthy donor and process it further into peel or liquid, which can be administrated as oral or through colonoscopy. Many successful clinical trials done on fecal mi microbial transplant, which able to treat Crohn's diseases, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel diseases, autism, and many more. Revolution in the mental health care. In past theory, chronic stress and susceptibility gene cause psychological dysfunction and need to get psychotherapy and be under medication. Now, that has changed. In the present theory, chronic stress, antibiotic, poor diet and unhealthy lifestyle contribute to microbiota gut-brain axis dysfunction. This can be treated with healthy diet, psychobiotic, prebiotic and Fecal microbial transplant. Some current and recent exploration. Stay tuned. More research on probiotic and prebiotic on anxiety and depression. A 30 days human study found these two probiotics, Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium, helpful for reducing anxiety as compared to a placebo. Sarkar, 2016. In another study, a mixture of these probiotics compared to placebo taken for four weeks substantially reduced depression in human subject. Similarly, bifidobacterium strains and lactobacillus strains were used. In a study of academic stress, healthy medical students took either this probiotic or a placebo for eight weeks before an exam. The day before the exam, Plasma cortisol was substantially lower in the probiotic group compared to the placebo group. In a clinical trial of people with major depressive disorder, patients were given this probiotic, Lactobacillus acidophilus, Lactobacillus casei, Bifidobacterium bifidium. Compared to the placebo, the people who took the probiotic were less depressed at the end of eight weeks study and also had significant decrease in systemic inflammation, reduced insulin resistance and significantly rise in glutathione, which is the master antioxidant. A study looking at the effect of this probiotic on anxiety, depression, stress and coping strategy in healthy human volunteer found a reduction of psychological distress and improved problem solving ability at the end of 30 day study. Harrington states, for anyone experiencing anxiety and or depression, regular supplementations with this probiotic combination seems as natural and worthwhile practice. An article called 10 Best Probiotic for Depression and Anxiety, Gut-Brain Axis Modification named the following as the most helpful probiotic for mood regulations, described their functions and showed relevant results from research study in which Psychobiotics were used, which were from Bifidobacterium strains and Lactobacillus strains. The articles also discuss pathogenic bacteria that may cause anxiety and depression. The following are Clostridium, Enterococcus faecalis, Camylobacter jejuni, Citrobacter rodentium. The best way to strengthen your child immune system or even you is by getting back to nature. Support bacteria is the only culture that some people even might have. The apotheosis of feces. Yeah, you are looking at the sheet fountain in Chicago, USA. Always trust your gut. It knows what your head hasn't figured out yet. I hope you have gained some useful information from earlier slides. Now, let me introduce over our program offered in UCSI University. It is Masters in Science, Healthy Aging, Medical Aesthetic and Regenerative Medicine. Our program is Masters in Science 
of healthy aging, medical aesthetic and regenerative medicine. We being the leading pioneer, UCSI, the first university in the world to offer the postgraduate program addressing all three fields. It is also been recognized by our MQA panel, the only master pathway to obtain the letter of credential and privilege, well known as LCP in Malaysia. This program also offers profound learning through experience guided by subject expert, access to latest aesthetic equipment, and free hands-on session. About us, we have students from all over the world, more than 80 students from 12 countries. We also have students from all walks of medical discipline, from subspecialties to medical officers. We have almost 100% passing rate and more than 150 graduates since year 2013. What does our program cover? We have mainly three exclusive course, which is the current in medical field. Healthy aging, which covers exercise prescription, balanced diet, stress reduction, hormonal enhancement, supplementation. Medical aesthetic, yes, you heard me right. Medical aesthetic, which covers injectable, light and laser, radiofrequency, chemical pills, microdermabrasion. The last, not the least, Regenerative Medicine, the future. It covers genetic engineering, stem cell therapy, cloning, artificial organ, nerve implants, continuity. Interested to join in? Then you definitely wanted to know the entry requirement. For the local student, MBBS or equivalent degree and valid annual practicing cert is needed. While for the international student, medical degree valid practicing certificate issued by their own medical council iel ts band 6 or tofel 550 is required career prospect your path will be more diverse after graduating from our msc program you would definitely practice with more concerning towards prevention and focusing to enhance patients health you can indulge in research for those passion to be one. Be an academician and even escalate oneself as entrepreneurial. If you are concerning on financial as challenge to pursue this course, then we have good news for you. Financial aids. To date, approximately 150 million in scholarship and study assistance have been awarded. For further inquiry about our program, please do email or contact us. Together with our proud graduates, we would like to thank you for your time and kind attention.